Hi there and welcome to TechPlower. So you got your new Apple TV 4th generation and you don't have a clue how to set it up. Don't worry, I'll show you. Before we start, we have to ensure we have all the things we need. First of all, you of course you need your Apple TV. Then you need the power cable that was included in the box. And we need the Siri remote. And lastly, we need one thing that is not included in the box. It's an HDMI cable. Since I already have all of those things, we can get started. I've already connected the HDMI cable to the TV. So the next step is to connect the other end to the Apple TV, like this. So now the TV and the Apple TV are connected together. The next step is to give the Apple TV some power. So we will have to connect the power cable to the Apple TV and then we have to connect the power plug to our wall socket. So now the Apple TV is both connected to the TV and it has some power. As we can see, the blue widest light on the Apple TV has lit up. And now we have to wait for the Apple TV to start so we can continue the setup process. If your TV does not switch to the correct source, you have to switch the TV to the appropriate source for the Apple TV. In my case, it's HDMI 1. When the Apple TV has started, we are prompted to pair the Siri remote to the Apple TV. To do that, we have to hold the remote closely to the Apple TV and hold down both the menu key and the volume up button. If everything went successfully, the Apple TV will go to the next step. Now we are prompted to select the language for your Apple TV. To select the language, we have to use the touchpad on the Siri remote. You can simply scroll with the remote to select the language we want. We simply press the touchpad to select the language. Since my mother language, Icelandic, is not available in the list of languages, I'll choose English instead. Now we have to select the country we live in. Here we also scroll with the Siri remote to find the country we live in. So you find the country and click the scroll area to select the country. And surprise surprise, I found Iceland. Thanks Apple. In the next step, we have two choices. To set up the Apple TV using another iDevice, such as an iPhone or iPad, or we can set it up manually. I will go through both methods in this tutorial. Let's start with the manual one. So we scroll to set up manually and click the touchpad to select it. Then we prompt it to select our Wi-Fi connection. So simply scroll with the touchpad to the appropriate Wi-Fi and select it by pressing the touchpad. And now comes the fun part. <laughs> Not exactly. Now we have to type in our Wi-Fi password using the Apple remote. So we have to scroll sideways to select the appropriate letters or numbers. It's not the easiest thing to do, but we will accomplish it. When we are finished putting in the Wi-Fi password, we simply scroll down to the continue button and press the touchpad. If the Apple TV is successfully connected to the Wi-Fi, the Apple TV will now activate. So we'll wait for that. When the Apple TV has been activated, we're prompted to type in our Apple ID. And the same fun begins here as when we were typing in the Wi-Fi password. We have to use the Apple remote to scroll between letters and numbers to type in the Apple ID. You could scroll down to the option to skip this step. But if you skip it, you can't buy anything from the App Store in the Apple TV. So I recommend that you sign in with your Apple ID. When we've entered in the Apple ID, we scroll down and press continue using the touchpad. Then we prompt it to type in our password for the Apple ID. Same process there, scroll with the Apple remote. When the password has been entered, scroll down and press continue. Before we continue the setup, let's go back where we selected to set up manually and do these steps using an iPad. If you want to set up your Apple TV using an iDevice, you select set up with device by clicking the touchpad. So now you have to unlock your iDevice. In my case, I'm using an iPad mini. So I unlock my iPad mini and then I have to enable Bluetooth. But the Bluetooth is already enabled on my iPad. So I'm prompted to set up the Apple TV using this iPad. So of course I want that. So we'll just press continue on the iPad. Since we decided to set up the Apple TV this time through the iPad, we don't need to input the Wi-Fi password. The Apple TV detects the Wi-Fi through the iPad. And when the Apple TV has found and connected to the Wi-Fi, we're prompted on the iPad to input our password for the Apple ID. 
We don't have to input the Apple ID itself, the iPad already knows that. So we input the password on the iPad itself, and then press OK in the dialog. When the Apple ID login has been confirmed, we're prompted if we want to send usage data to Apple. And we can choose no thanks, or OK. We'll just press OK this time. Now we are at the same place as we ended with the manual setup, so we don't need the iPad anymore. Now we have to move the focus to our TV again and the Apple remote, and we're prompted to select if we want to enable location services or not. If we want to keep our location private, we just disable the location services, but I want to utilize the location services, for example for the aerial screen servers. So I'll scroll down with the Apple remote and press the touchpad to select enable location services. Next up we're prompted if we want to automatically download new HD videos for the Arial screen server. And in my case, yeah, why not? So I scroll down to automatically download, but you can of course choose not to. Next we are prompted if we want to send diagnostics and usage data to Apple. In most cases I don't, but for this video's purpose I will choose send to Apple. Now we're prompted with app analytics. These analytics are used by app developers. So if an app crashes on the Apple TV, crash data will automatically be sent to the app developer. And since I'm an app developer myself, I choose to share these reports with the app developers. But you can of course choose to don't share them. But in my case, I scroll down to share with app developers and click the touchpad. The last step is of course terms and conditions. Do you want to agree to the terms and conditions from Apple? Scroll down to agree. Scroll down to disagree if you don't. In my case, I agree to the terms and conditions and scroll down to agree and touch the touchpad. Now your Apple TV is ready to use and you can start enjoying it. Simple enough? If you want to reset your Apple TV, it only requires a few easy steps. So you go to the home screen of the Apple TV by pressing the home screen button and scroll down to the settings icon and click the touchpad. In the settings menu, you scroll down to system and press the touchpad. In there, you scroll down to reset and press the touchpad. Now we get three options. To cancel the reset, restore the Apple TV to factory settings or to reset all the settings. We want to reset all the settings, so we scroll up to that option and press the touchpad. The Apple TV wants to ensure that you are sure if you want to reset and prompts you again by asking if you want to reset all the settings. We can either choose cancel or reset all settings. Since we are sure, we scroll up and press the touchpad on reset all settings. Now the Apple TV will reset all settings and then take a few seconds to restart itself. After restarting, it will prompt you with the first step of the setup process to pair the Apple remote to the Apple TV. That was quite simple, wasn't it? That was the whole setup and reset process for the Apple TV. I really hope this video was helpful and you enjoyed it. If you have any comments on the setup process or some questions, feel free to ask me in the comments and I'll try to answer them as well as I can. And of course, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe and share See you in my next video.